Hey viewers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where I unfortunately have to bring you a very powerful, sobering and concerning message from well-respected economist John Adams. His message reads, Dear all, I hope everyone is keeping well and safe during this very turbulent time. The world in general and the global economy specifically have fundamentally changed in the past couple of months in dramatic fashion. While everyone has been focused on the developments with the coronavirus, we have seen the past five weeks in particular, dramatic stock market and commodity market crashes and extraordinary actions by governments and central banks to stop the largest debt bubble in the history of the world from collapsing. I have been observing events very closely and doing my own research. The more I have researched the coronavirus, COVID-19, the decision to lock down the Australian economy and the unprecedented economic stimulus package the more I have been dismayed and outraged with what I have found. I have come to the conclusion that COVID-19, while real, has been used by the government and mainstream media to whip up mass hysteria that has been used to justify a lockdown of the Australian economy, the stripping of our political and civil rights, and the rollout of unprecedented levels of economic, fiscal and monetary stimulus which has been used to bail out domestic and multinational financial institutions, i.e. banks, which were on the verge of going bust given the unprecedented breaking of the US repo market back on 17 September 2019. This phenomenon is not exclusive to Australia, but has been common across many countries around the world, especially Western democracies. Within four weeks from 12 March 2020, the announced Australian monetary and fiscal economic stimulus by the federal as well as state and territory governments was in excess of 417 billion Australian dollars, an outrageous sum of money which continues to grow with even more stimulus annou announcements by governments during the current economic lockdown. Not only does Australia have record household and foreign debt bubbles, but now we have a greatly devalued Australian dollar and governments which are now drowning in ever-growing public sector debts. If Australia was in a massive economic hole before the coronavirus, our economic problems have, been now, have now been compounded by several multiples. There is a massive economic cost, which, which with the Australian people, including yourself, will have to pay for the folly of our political leadership has demonstrated in recent weeks. Without dramatic policy reform to fix the damage that has been done, life in Australia will be truly horrible in the coming years. I fear that Australians will not have the capacity to stomach the amount of dramatic policy reform required to fix the Australian economy and hence Australia risks never being able to economically recover from the current economic disaster. From the six scenarios of economic Armageddon, which I outlined back in 2018, the risk that Australia experiences stagflation, scenario five, is becoming a larger concern by the day. It is now incumbent on yourself to remain informed and to take more steps that can insulate yourself from the current economic lockdown and the consequences of the economic stimulus packages which have been rolled out to date and which may be announced and implemented into the future. It has never been more important for Australians to take an active interest in their country and take steps to not only protect their own economic interests, but protect the economic interests of the country from a reckless political class. Now, I recently, um, I won't read the rest of it here because it's not really relevant to what we're talking about here. However, I did in a recent video uh, talk about the 10-step preparation plan that John Adams uh, spoke about to news.com.au and I encourage you to watch this video that I spoke about um, some time ago where I reviewed this article by John Adams and I will just briefly touch on it. I'll leave a link to this uh, video that I did on what we're about to briefly touch over. These are the steps that you should be taking well, you should have really been taking in the past, but uh, these 10 steps will prepare you for the coming economic Armageddon, which has fallen upon us. This is the economic Armageddon. And in prepar preparing for a way forward, 
the first thing you should do is read history. History, one way or another, does repeat itself, and if not, it does rhyme. Step two, focus on your personal cash flow. Step three, reduce debts, which may be difficult to do at the moment. Step four, hold good money. Step five, diversify your income sources and professional skill set. Step six, develop and improve your home skills. Step seven, strengthen your personal relationships. Step eight, eat healthy, become physically fit and sleep well, all of which is very difficult to do when you're locked in a property. Step nine, embrace spirituality. And step 10, become politically engaged and advocate for good public policy. So the last one I just want to touch on quickly, step 10, becoming politically engaged and advocate for good public policy. In Australia, we don't really see riots on the streets. We don't really see people uh, forming political parties uh, as much as you do in other countries. And the reason why we don't do that is essentially because we're very sheltered or were very sheltered. We were somewhat rich per capita compared to many other countries in the world. And when you've got food, water, shelter and a bit of money to go play, that might be have a beer, have a bet, uh, go to the beach, whatever it may be, there's not really much reason to rise and form a political party and protest. What we're seeing now though in in the world, uh, starting off in America, we can see people actually taking to the streets. Now, people are taking to the streets in America against the lockdown laws. That is, in, they seem to be inconsistent. I'm trying to remain as neutral as I can here because I want to remain impartial to what's happening around us. That is, you can see that in America, these people have had enough of being locked down and they've also had enough of being told inconsistent rules. Some people can do this, but not that, but sort of this and sort of that, and it doesn't really make sense. We see the same thing happening in Australia. We're getting to a point now where people have been locked down for so long and a policing state has come into play and the rules aren't always consistent. You can walk in a park and do exercise, but you can't sit in a park and relax. You need to separate from other people, but you can't paddleboard in the middle of an ocean by yourself. These rules seem inconsistent, and when people become desperate and money becomes tight and your mental health starts to sway, people will actually start to rise. And I unfortunately believe, further to this economic collapse, I actually believe that there's going to be war. I believe that the war may have already begun, whether that war is an economic war, a war uh, through a virus, or an internal and domestic war amongst ourselves, or an international war amongst nations, we will see war. I think economically, historically, and almost spiritually, we are sadly overdue for war. I don't advocate for war, I don't want there to be war, but the reality is tensions around planet Earth are building up. Now there has been some theories out there that this whole coronavirus, as may have been alluded here, in this statement from John Adams is being used as a tool for economies to hide their poor practices. That is, we can see that this is going to be used to prop up banks and whilst the lower and upper class, believe it or not, may do better in some situations, the majority, the middle class, is going to be decimated by this economic collapse. And that decimation of this middle class creates a greater divide as the middle class is decimated and pushed into the lower class or the lower fiscal prosperity, you're going to see a greater divide between the upper class and the lower class with the shrinking of the middle class. The desperation that we're about to see is greatly concerning. We're already starting to see the stresses of being locked down for so long, the stresses of a policing state being pushed onto the people, the stresses of inconsistent rules applied inconsistently, and this is, of course, nothing against the police. The police are also trying to figure out what they're doing in themselves as they themselves are reacting very quickly to this ever-changing environment of which they're trying to operate. We can see governments pumping unforeseeable amounts of money into the economy, diluting everyone's money, eroding your savings through the invisible tax that is inflation, and, of course, devaluing the Australian dollar so it has less purchasing power abroad within your super, within other investments, of which we are so heavily reliant upon. The only good thing about de devaluing a dollar or a currency is that it can increase exports because if it's cheaper for people to buy your stock, your commodity, whatever it is that you're selling within your country, there's a good chance that you'll sell more, more of it. 
But of course, when the global economy is locked down and not many things are moving, that kind of benefit goes out the window. A big advantage of having a lower currency is for tourism. An example is when Greece had a very low currency or certain nations had a low currency uh, before they went into the euro, or if I'm talking about European nation, it was very cheap to go to these uh, countries and holiday in those countries and billions of dollars would be poured into economies through tourism. Well, of course, that type of income now is completely out the window. Moreover, as we see people losing their jobs, even if they wanted to create businesses where they could be buying and selling goods internationally, those options are taken away. We are reaching a breaking point. And this breaking point means that you need to become politically involved. Remember, it is your democratic freedom to speak. It is also your right to be heard. But in saying this, I encourage you to realize that it's not your right to not be offended. If someone says something that you find offensive, it's not your right to riot and beat that person because you didn't like the words that came out of their mouth. Concurrently, if you want to say something, you shouldn't be scared of standing up for what you believe is right. Do it respectfully, do it without violence, do it without carrying on. However, now is the time to actually become more politically involved than what you had been in the past. Why? Because now we're shifting from this economic utopia that we've enjoyed for so long to the reality of the free market that has in fact been distorted through quantitative easing, fractional reserve lending, cash bans, bail-ins, bail-outs, and the propping up of the institutions who created this entire mess in the first place. Let me know your thoughts on this. Is this war? Is it just a little glitch in the matrix? Or is it something else? Thanks for listening. Be safe. Happy investing. And I'll talk to you next time.